Hello, and welcome back to Thy Dog Cast. Happy Halloweenus. Happy Halloweenies! Um, I decided to dress up like your neighborhood pedophile, and Chelsea okay. just. <laughs> If you're listening, I just we have a should have crispy dressed mustache. Up, but we were not prepared for this. I, I mean, I was prepared for what the topic, but I just thought right now we are we should have dressed up. I mean, a lot of people listen. We're recording so. this in advance of Halloween, so it didn't really. No. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're gonna get it also in advance. Between Happy Halloween, pre-Halloween. So, what is our topic for today? Because I'm not aware of what's going on here. It is. Some, I would say, we're going to start with a nice little sweet layer of terrible Halloween stories that are true and horrific. And then we might just get into a deeper, creepy, creepy stories. I love creepy things. So, um, yeah, this is kind of what I dove into, some creep. Horrible Halloween stories. Yeah, so like... They're bad, but they're just like nice little bite size of bad. I know that sounds terrible now saying it, but like the other ones are like deeper stories that are like dark and du- messed, dubious, like, like dark, like dark and kind of like um, what's the Skinwalker kind of ones? Yeah, uh, everyone hated me for <laughs> being a devil's advocate. Apparently, no one can have a different opinion, but. Either believe in the Skinwalker game or you're not a part. I'm of it. not saying I don't believe in dark things. Skinwalker I'm just saying. Skinwalker represent. That the, these stories, there's some that were like, that's a bit that I don't know what I'd do in that. That's pretty creepy. Well, like, uh, and I hate, I, and to preface this, I hate scary things. Like, how much I hate things. Spook, They're scary. Spooky, scary. I mean, the only thing that's funny is when I scare him, and that's it's about so it. So annoying. So let's just start with the question of the day to kick yeah. it off. Give us a quad. What was it? Crap, I found it. What is the scariest movie you've ever seen? I already know your answer, I think. What do you think my answer is? The lamb before, is it the oh Silence of the Lambs? The Lamb Before Sorry. Time. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a movie I'd watch. Like The Lamb Before Time, but it's a, no. little, it's a little sheep instead. <laughs> yeah, I'd watch, the, I'd watch The Lamb Before Time. No, The um, Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs, yes. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty good one. Um, the scariest movie I've ever watch and it could See, be I'm, like as I'm a also child not a scary movie person um like i don't watch scary movies they're just like oh heebie-jeebies i don't like ho- like horror movies like gory movies i'm just like i'm not even like offended by blood or i'm not like grossed out by it i'm just like come on like i don't like we just watched squid game and it was good but i also like part of it like it was so overly violent and i was just kind of like Come on, like yeah, I don't need to be shocked by what's happening. What scares you then? Like, what's a movie that would scare you? Like, Silence of the Lambs, kind of like it could be real, or is it like <laughs> things unknown? Um, like, what movies are like your? Ooh. I remember watching. I watched Saw when I was like thirteen with my buddy Sam, and I was like, "This is so effed up. Like, this is horrible." Um, you know I love Saw, right? Silence of the, Silence of the <laughs> Lambs, like, yeah, and that's like that's like the type of movie that I hate. Is Saw. no, like, I hate so I hate it usually, but that was just like it's mind games, um, which but, is like Squid Games. Yes, um, Silence of the Lambs is a scary movie, but it is so good. And the only reason it was actually scary because it was funny the circumstances in which I watched it. Um, I when I went over to Australia the first time, I went by myself. And I was staying with strangers who I'd met online. I talked to through Instagram and stuff like that. And I told him, and now he's like I, one of the, he's like the sweetest man ever. And I wasn't actually like freaked out, but it was more of just like the realization of I was sitting in basically a stranger's house across the world watching a movie about a murderer and stuff like that. And I was like, I, he was texting me during this. I remember that. You're like, I want you to scare this movie. No, it was so, it was so good, but it was just like the circumstances of it were really, really funny. Yeah. But like the guy, Joel is like the greatest dude on planet earth, but it was just like a really funny circumstance of like watching the silence of the lambs with the dude who I'd met like a week prior. It's like in ironic. Australia. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I haven't watched a ton of scary movies. Like really, I'd probably just say Saw or Silence of the Lambs, and I know those aren't even bad. Um, I would say, because I hate scary movies, and when I was younger, there was a question like, what was a movie you, you watched too young? 
like with, when it comes to scary movies. And I would say Ring. Never that, seen it. Oh. I know, it's a grudge, right? It, that's a different movie, oh. <laughs> which is also the same kind of concept. But The Ring so up on it. terrified me at a young age when I watched it. It was the one with the hair. And if you watched yeah. it, you would die within I seven that, days. I thought that was the grudge. That's Ring. Grudge was like, that was creepy too. Um, but it's The Ring. And it was the movie, and you would watch it, and in seven days you would die. And she would come out of your, your, the TV and just start crawling at you. And I, I was it. like, not cool with it in my life. Is this, what? I said I love it. You love that? No, I don't love that. Um, I hate anything like that. I'm cool with Saw because it's like, the cool things like messed up, but it's like, it's all game. It's like more of a psychological messed up psychopath than, well, I guess a lot of those I don't like. Like I don't do any of the jumping, like you Freddy don't like Krueger, jump scares. Um, any of those, those like the Freddy mask guy, any, any cannibalism, not cool with. I remember distinctly watching a movie, not knowing it was a scary movie. It was just on the TV when I was like in high school and the guy was driving the, or the girl or guy was driving to get gas, got out. And then the gas guy locked them in the store because they saw something when they were putting the gas in the back seat, and they got scared thinking that they were going to get murdered from the, the gas attendant. And instead they ran in their car and got yeeted with the head. And I was like, I can never not drive without looking in my back seat, and I always have looked in my back seat. It's a good thing you do. So I wouldn't say we're good at naming a, a um, lot. I mean, I can name I, Conjuring, I have... Terrible. Um, what's the one in New Jersey? Anaheim, Anna, Anna, Anaheim. Horror, horror, anime, horror, anime, horror. I don't know, Acme Horror. No, <laughs> it's the one with, I know everyone. I appreciate this the, this comments because at least people like answer my thing. It's with, the, what's his name was it? Ryan Reynolds. I think. I don't know. Anime, anime, anime. It's like the haunted place in New Jersey. Couldn't tell you. Anyways, all to be said, yeah, I'm not a big fan of scary movies because I don't like things that, or like things that could be real, like paranormal acti- uh Paranormal activity. Paranormal. That's, Isn't the, the paranormal thing? activity was like a big, big. Is it activity? Or was it just paranormal? No, it's called paranormal activity. Uh, yeah, that, that was one's, like the one of like the haunting of the house. That one from, like, sucked. The security Any footage. exorcism ones. I, I did actually. I've seen the exorcism of. Emily, Anna, Ro- Emily Rose. Emily yeah. Rose, yeah. And I literally don't All remember a single sucked. thing about it. I don't like any... I don't, I don't like... And I love that people like... I do appreciate the really fun individuals who like appreciate scary movies. Like they love it and they just find it like... I just can't... I don't have the, I don't have the gut for it. I'm going to play some spooky games on stream though. Like I'm excited about doing that. Like watching horror movies, whatever, but that's going to be really fun. Like do that one game really... you played was terrible. Uh, the forest, the one where you're running and then things are just like popping out at you. And so there's those, like but dead that's little like, potato I don't, man. <laughs> I don't like, yes, it's I don't mu- like mutant, it. mutant cannibals. Um, I don't like watching horror movies, but like playing scary games is really fun. And I think you would really enjoy it too. We'll get you on one. See, here's the thing. I don't like scary movies. <laughs> But I always loved Halloween, and I loved dressing up for it. It was always so fun. Um, you know, our Halloween costume last year was sweet. It was old we were people. old people, but we were like solid old people. Like literally, like to had the make, makeup done. And like stuff I had like the that. watch. We had like everything. I had glasses, done. a walker, makeup. I wore like an old leather or like old a shoes. Old, like, I found old yeah, shoes for him. Like it was perfect. This year. Because I can say it because we're going to the we're doing a Halloween party before this will be released. Uh, we're gonna be zombie parents, like new parents, and we're just gonna be zombies that are parents, and it's gonna be awesome. Good, good. Meme. I know that doesn't sound great, but I never like do things like weak sauce. I like to do things up. Quick question: What is your favorite Halloween costume that you ever did? Um. I was, what was, oh, crap. What was that? Oh, crap. I can't believe I'm forgetting this this costume or the name of the company. It was, um, hold on. You have to, you, it was yours. I'm going to think of I it because I can't believe I'm thinking, so forgetting the name of the. I was a, a serial killer one year when I was like 13, 14, but. Original. With a box you, of cereals. God, you're such a dick. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was the. It's uh, not the Seven Up girl. What was the the? Sounds really original. Sounds so original. No, that you came I was it. literally looked like this girl in a commercial for 
a soda company. I cannot remember the name of it. And I literally like like people used to joke around. It was in college. I like looked like her and I sounded like like I act danced like her. So I literally just dressed up like it with everything. And everyone was like all night being like, no way. Crap. I'm going to have to think of the name of this. I'm terrible. People used to call it Kool-Aid man in high school. So it's like I mom know it's brain, like man. Famous. Other than all that, right. when I was a kid, I was an Eminem. But <laughs> Good one. Solid stuff. Um, all right. Horrifying Halloween stories. Let's Sorry. jump in. Yeah. Let's just get this started. Happy Halloween. So these ones are, I would just say, these are like the light teasers. These are very simple. They're not great, but like in terms of like, don't look over. I'm going to read them. Um, but I'm just going to start and then we'll maybe get into like some really, some really scary stories. So the first one is called Trick or Treater Who Died After Being, I think it's that cyanide. Yeah. Cyanide? Yeah. Lace candy. That's what I thought. So... In 1974, eight-year-old Timothy O'Brien died on Halloween evening after eating candy laced with cyanide. But the story has an even more horrific twist. It turned out the candy was poisoned by Timmy's father. Oh. Ronald, who was in financial trouble and had Ronald. and been taken out and uh, taken out insurance policies on his children. In addition to Timmy, Ronald O'Brien gave poisoned candy to four other children, including his daughter Elizabeth. Thankfully, none of them made it. O'Brien was executed by lethal injection in 1984, so four, 10 years later. Can you imagine? There's a kid. So did the kid, the kid didn't die? No, he died. He but literally the other died. Kids, other kids didn't die. The, the other kids didn't eat it. Wow. He, they laced them all, yeah. and this kid died before they all did. Daddy what, daddy? I mean, that's pretty messed that up. so bad. You're willing to murder your children for their insurance policies? Must really not like these kids. I mean, I expect, I mean, I don't like to say this, but I expected more of the wife before you, you know, murder the kids. You expect the wife to be the one that murders the kids? No, him to murder Oh, murder the wife. the wife before the kids. But maybe you don't want to deal with the kids. Very, very true. That sounds really bad, but I'm trying to think of a crazy person. The suicide mistaken for a Halloween de decoration. Oh. In 2005, Horrible. a 42-year-old woman in De uh, Delaware committed suicide by hanging herself from a tree across the street from a residential area. Though the body was easily visible to passer, uh, passerby, pass, passersby and passing vehicles, no one could call the police for hours. Why? They assumed the woman was swaying in the wind was a Halloween decoration. That is so effed with a capital E F. Dude, dude. that is mess. A mess. Oh. Not that I'm saying people should like, like people. That's pretty messed up that she even did it well, like, right here's there. Thing, like, I would probably assume the same thing. I would like drive. So I'm like, God, what kind of psychopath would hang well, that, that realistic of a decoration? Well, that is a really realistic person. Well, no, that's what I was saying. Like, I'd be like, what kind of psychopath would like make that realistic of a decoration? That or why so there? Because it doesn't sound like it was actually at a, it sounded like, like across from a residential area. Oh. But crazy that hours go by and no one said anything. Brutal. That's messed up. That is brutal. Okay. Onward. The man who showed up to a Halloween party dressed as Freddy Krueger and went on a rampage. <sighs> a Halloween party in San Antonio, Texas was full force last year when a man dressed as Freddy Krueger showed up uninvited. He opened fire on a crowd shooting five people. Oh, well, I mean, he's a gun. That's just stupid. The son who decapitated his mother and left her body in the street. One night in Long... Looking at it. One night in Long Island, just before Halloween 2014, a decapitated body laid in the street five feet away from a severed head. Too many passers, passerby, that's a weird name or word. The hor a horrific sight appeared to be a Halloween prank, but the truth was far more disturbing. 35 year old Derek Ward had used a kitchen knife to kill and decapitate his mother, Patricia, then carried the body and head out of their apartment. After leaving the body and the head in the street, Ward jumped in the front of a commuter train, killing himself. Ooh. So people just thought it was a Halloween prank. These are horrible. Could you imagine? Oh, these are horrible. I'm never stepping outside of this but these house are just ever like, what, again. These are like stories, like horrible stories that happen like On around Halloween. Halloween that no, kind of yes, got whole, away because of Halloween. Of yeah, that's crazy. Um. The unspeakable explosion at holiday performance. At a holiday performance, 1963, many uh, Hoosers decided to spend Halloween night at their Indiana State Fairgrounds Coliseum, watching a holiday on ice skating exhibit. exhibit. 
Um, unbeknownst to them, a rustic tank in the concession area began to leak gas. The room, which lacked ventilation, quickly filled with gas. As the skaters performed their grand finale, the gas reached an electrical popcorn maker, triggering a huge explosion. 74 people were killed and nearly 400 were injured. What the heck, Halloween, dude? man. That's nuts. How like does that, dude. No one smells gas. Propane. Oh, yeah, I guess that's. Is like gas is like one of the scariest things ever. Like when you talk about like those type of accidents of like mm. just freak accidents. I'm a, I'm a propane explosion That's like Final survivor. Destinations thing. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's also a video. Like, yeah. I almost the, got Final Destinations. No, don't talk about that. We'll talk about what that. What are you later. talking about? I don't know if we, we've never even talked about this on the podcast, yes. and you and I never oh, no. ever even talked about it. I, it was. The day I had my failed camping trip attempt with Sadie, there was a flatbed truck, like a big moving truck that's flatbed in front of me, and they were carrying a bunch of pipes, like big, giant, um, probably like... PVC pipes? Foot, oh, no, big pipes. Foot diameter pipes like that that were for like sewage pipes, and they accelerated, and all the pipes slid off the back of the truck, and I was the closest person behind the car, and I had to slam all my brakes, and all the pipes scattered across the intersection. That's not good. I'm glad that you were safe. Final destination. I hate that. The Japanese exchange student who knocked on the wrong door. 25 years ago, 16-year-old Japanese exchange student, uh, Yoshi Hiro uh, Hatori? I'm not, that's not that bad. Yoshi, Yoshihiro Hatatori. Okay, that sounds better. <laughs> Dressed up as John Travolta's character from Saturday Night Fever, they headed out to a Halloween party in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and he was mistakenly dropped off at the wrong house, and the homeowner panicked by the unexpected visitor, shot and killed him, and the homeowner was later acquitted for any wrongdoing. His mother um, commented the 20th anniversary of her son's death, I've been observing American society for the past 20 years. The ongoing situation there has been incomprehensible in Japanese. Um, I want to encourage more ways to adopt gun control. So, I mean, that's kind of crazy. You just answer your door and shoot somebody. He's 16. Like, I don't know. Yeah, that sounds like a crazy person. Yeah, that, that was a wrong was door. But here's sure. the thing. Baton Rouge, Louisiana. It's like, I don't know. Dude might thought something was going down. I don't know. But, Hall- I mean, Halloween, come on. The assailant who, wearing the same mask the killers wore in the film Scream, murdered a man. Um, in Scream, killers wearing ghost face masks cautiously murdered, or callously murdered, not cautiously, uh, callously murdered the people in their town. Chillingly, on Halloween night 2013, someone wearing the same ghost uh, face mask shot and killed 19-year-old Anthony C. Berry before disappearing into the New York night. What is wrong with people? Like You are crazy. I just, seeing the person in the screen mask, I know it's not related, made me think of another horrible movie that I hated that I know you love them, The Purge. <gasps> the Purge. I hate I those I don't movies. like The Purge. I just. I think it's like. Fascinating. I would hate that. I thought you'd be It's like psycho. my nightmare. It's literally, I mean, I'm sure everyone's nightmare, but that would be my nightmare. And this is where I feel like. Like getting murdered but I just, is your nightmare? No, The Purge. But I love saying that to you. The QB, or this one's not good. I'm going to skip that one. This one's crazy. Oh. The man who opened his door to find a trick or treater who would end his life. In 1982, 69-year-old uh, Marvin Brandland was getting ready for bed after a night of handing out Halloween candy when there was a, uh, one more knock at the door. He opened the door to find someone wearing a pillowcase over his head with holes cut out of the eyes. The figure said, trick or treat, give me your money or I'll shoot. He then pulled out a gun and ordered Brandlin into the basement where Brandlin kept a safe. Um, Brandlin, figuring it was a prank since only family members knew about the safe, grabbed the gun, grabbed for the gun. The person in the pillowcase fired, hitting him right in the throat, killing him. Oh my the killer God. fled, leaving the pillowcase at the scene. In 2010, the pillowcase was tested for DNA, but there wasn't enough DNA on it to make a match. Lord. Dude, I don't know why you think that's a joke. People are sick. Maybe because Halloween brings like crazies out, but also brings pranksters, so you don't like sometimes know the difference. Yeah. I always use the caution of I don't go with the prank. I don't and think so. It's now, prank. here's the problem. That's why the guy got shot? You have, yeah. The guy 
where the homeowner shot someone, and now you have the homeowner got shot in uh, two very unfortunate Not gonna situations. Not going to read the top of this. In 1990, Chicago area teenager Brian um, Jewell's job was to give hayride customers a scare by pretending to hang from a gallows. Ooh. He pulled off the stunt just fine earlier in the day, but the night something went terribly wrong. When the hayride approached uh, Jewell, he was uh, who was hanging from the gallows with his feet touching the ground, the tractor uh, driver began to worry. The driver's worries only grew when he failed to deliver his usual speech. According to the prosecutor, there was no signs of foul play. He hanged himself for real. Hung himself. By accident. I just. I feel like I that can't was like. Ever why would fathom he... in my mind where it's like, okay, so you're gonna like fake hang yourself, but we're gonna have a thing right here that like you just put your feet on and and then you I don't actually know. hang yourself, but like oh you fall and you kick it and you slip and then you actually. I, I don't want to look up the thing, but I'll do the next one because it's the last one for the. These are just the taste the teasers. I got oh. these are the lighthearted ones, huh? I mean, these are just like the. <laughs> this is really lighthearted. These are like not going into the next realm. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. On Halloween in 1984, eight-year-old Brian Massey um, should have been enjoying a night of trick-or-treating with his sisters, Tiffany 11, Tamara 10. Instead, he was subject to a real-life horror film when his new stepfather, 26-year-old David Andrews, stabbed his mother to death before chasing his sisters down the hall and murdering them as well. Andrews then came into Mas- uh, Massey's room covered in blood and kidnapped the boy. Two days later, the police found Massey alive um, after apprehending Andrews, who tried to, and failed to kill himself. Disturbingly, Andrews stuck a, uh, struck a plea deal in exchange for a reduction of charges. He is eligible for parole next month, which is now which the now 41-year-old Massey um, vehemently opposes. Yeah, I bet he opposes oh, that. Lord, can you imagine? Can you imagine yeah, like that? Some, sometimes that is some I trauma. Think, like people are okay, and then you hear stories like this, and you're like, people are people are not okay. People are the worst. <laughs> people are not humans like, are the worst. People are people can. It's crazy because like, I don't know, Halloween. So you ready for some? Give me the dark and dubious. The, the creepy ones. Yeah, give me the creep factor. Okay. Let me read. This okay. These are a little bit longer, but they don't all they don't disappoint. I lived in a house from hell for uh, for four years, from age of eleven to almost sixteen. There was a constantly something happening: doors flying open and shut, voices, footsteps. Nothing ever stayed where you put it. I was alone there a lot before uh, because both my parents worked, and I was constantly terrified. Nothing ever stayed where you put it. I was alone there a lot because both my parents worked, and I was constantly terrified. One of the most gut-level disturbing things, though, was this little girl in my bathroom. Every time I walked past my bathroom door, which was constantly since it was right outside my bedroom, I saw a little girl with blonde curled hair and a rose-colored dress. She just stood there, staring, looking like a photograph from 1905. I I started keeping the door closed so I could walk by without seeing her, but she was always there when I opened it. Once I stepped in past her, I couldn't see her anymore, but I could feel her there. She scared me, but I felt really sorry for her because she was trapped there, and just like me, but probably forever. As the years went by and the things in the house continued to get worse, she started seeming darker. I started feeling like she wasn't really a little girl. I knew there was something ugly in the house, and I felt like it was pre- uh, presenting this sympathetic image to me. Then I started thinking I was completely losing my mind. One day, when I was 14, I had a friend from out of town come stay with me for a week. I didn't tell her anything whatsoever about the house because I didn't think she would come if I did. Right after she got there, we were sitting in my room, and she left to go to the bathroom. After a minute, about a minute later, she walked back in with a puzzled look on her face and said, So there's a little girl in your bathroom. Um, I, 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 yeah, she hangs out there. Blonde hair? Question mark? I shouldn't say that. Curls? Pink dress? Yeah. You know, that's not really a little girl, don't you? I almost threw up. I was so relieved and terrified and excited and ready to run out of the house screaming. She wouldn't use my bathroom for the rest of the week, and I started using it at, at, as little as possible without pissing off my parents, who didn't uh, did not want to believe. Um, 
who did not want to believe. Eventually we moved out and I could not have been happier. I distanced myself from it mentally as much as I could. Then when I was 18, I took another friend on a road trip to, to pack up a few things I'd left in the house. My parents didn't manage to sell it and won it for five more years. The minute we got on, uh, got on the property, my friends seemed uncomfortable. Then when we came around the bend, in the long, steep driveway, he went completely white. I could tell something was wrong, but he insisted it was okay. So we went, we got to work. After a while, he asked to use the bathroom. I directed him to mine. Now, 20 seconds after he left, he came running back in, gasping for breath, and, and slammed the door, um, the bedroom door behind him. He started babbling about a little blonde girl who isn't a really uh, a little girl. All of a sudden, he went dead still, looked me in the eye, and very solemnly said, she's not happy with you. You left, and you weren't supposed to. We threw whatever we grabbed in, uh, grabbed in two trips into my car after I walked him to another bathroom and waited outside the door and got the F out of there at top speed. Oh, dude. I live for stories like this. Like, this is like straight juice to my veins. I like, I love that. Have we talked about this before? Have you ever had any ghost-esque experiences? Anything you think of? Not that I can... Not that honestly, honestly the top of my mind. I felt, and I this is really weird, I felt like heaviness in the middle of the night. Like when I was younger. You know, have you ever, you know what sleep paralysis is? Yeah. Okay. It could have been something like that. Mm. No, no monster came in the door. Mm. I've had, that's like, um, it's called, uh, it's like when you're in between sleep realms because I study in like, yeah. dream class I took. So I only have one ghost-esque story. And it's, and I don't even know if it's ghost, but it's just like, I don't know how to explain it mm. kind of thing. Or there's more just like, very very peculiar it's hard because so i could explain the story to you in like exact detail and you would know where it all took place but i also don't want to do that <laughs> to give away a bunch of stuff about like where we live and stuff but imagine you were on a road that heads towards the beach and the inlet yep and to the left of that there used to be a movie theater yep so in high school me and three of my friends like, on the weekends, like, we'd hang out, and we didn't, none of us drank, and none of us smoked, or anything like that, but we would just, like, drive around in my friend's Camaro until, like, two in the morning, listening to music, just goofing around, like, we weren't doing anything wrong, we were just, like, screwing off, really, and one night, it's, like, 1.30 in the morning, and we're driving down that road that heads towards beach, and in the middle of the road, there's a man, like, an old man, like, in his 60s or 70s, it's 1.30 in the morning on his bicycle, and he's just riding in circles in the middle of the road, like really slow, like doing like donuts on like a pedal bicycle, like in slow motion. And the dude, he's like a bit overweight, has a white beard, and like short whitish balding hair. So he's in the middle of the road just doing circles on his bicycle. And we drive past them, and how he's doing his circles, he's literally like, you know, there's a two lanes of traffic, you know, one going this way, one going that way, and he is riding in such a way that he's going in between each one, like that in a circle. Mm -hmm. And my friend, like, we, like, slow down as we come up to him, and he doesn't stop what he's doing, and my friend has to, like, go around him. Okay. And so we go up to where the beach is, and we turn around, and 20 minutes later, probably, we're coming back down the road. Maybe not even that long. Maybe, like, 10 minutes later, we're coming back down the same road, He's gone, and we turn into the plaza to the right where there's – it's like a strip mall, and there's a movie theater in the middle of it, and there's a McDonald's at the end of it. And we were going to go to the McDonald's to go get like a McFlurry or something like that. And we're driving down the strip mall, and it's just like store, 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 store. Everything's closed, though, because one thirty in the morning. And we drive past the movie theater, and in the movie theater, it's like dark in there, but there's like some dim lights, and – there's a bicycle pressed against the glass and the old, that dude is walking inside the movie theater, just like walking dead straight through like the lobby of the movie theater. And we can see him through the glass and we were all like, what the fuck? Like freaking out kind of thing. And he was just like deadpan walking through there like that. Like wasn't even doing anything. It's like super slowly like trudging through it. 
And we were just all like, what the F was that? Reasonably, it was just a drunk old man that was riding his bicycle and then found that someone forgot to lock the door in the movie theater. But it was like so weird because when we pulled up in the car when he was doing donuts in the street, he did not respond. Like he Mm. didn't even act like we were there kind of thing. Yeah. That's that can be really creepy. Homeless people also creep me out. They creep you out too. Yeah, it's weird. All right, you got another one. Got some more juice for me. Got yeah. some more juice for daddy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go on the next one. I grew up in there's a new one. Photographic memories. I grew up in New Mexico and was always very into the outdoors. This is so creepy, dude. This is so creepy. No, is I thought that, I thought this was gonna oh. be that. Um, outdoors, hiking, camping, rock climbing, etc. One summer when I was 19, I went on a four-day, three-night camping trip near my parents' house on my own. Might sound weird, but I had been in this area many times, and it was quite safe. Anyway, I brought my camera and looked. uh, I took a lot of pictures. When I came back and developed my film, there were three extra pictures that I didn't take of me sleeping. No. One each night. (gasps) None of my stuff was missing or stolen. You just got like chills down my neck, dude. None of my stuff was missing or stolen and nothing happened, but it freaked the hell out of me. Bro, pervert, bro. Pervert coyote out there taking photos. Every single night went in and took a photo of them sleeping. Coyote sitting there whacking it, looking at this Okay, stop. Why is that? That's just creepy. (laughs) coyote whacking it. Something offensive about that. It's a joke. Obviously, but that's insane. That's creepy. That's creepy. Skin Walker vibes. I mean, he the it's the, not even I, the I'm, armadillo. I'm not even talking about like an animal in this. The fact that somebody came in, grabbed their camera, and was like, "I'm gonna freak this person out." It's like a that's that's top level creepy. That is that's insane. because it was three different nights. Oh, I would dude. be terrified. I would never. Leave my house again. <laughs> yeah. I would never be camping ever again. I would tape a GoPro to the back of my head with a live feed on it wherever I went. You want to go to the next one? Yes. Okay. This one I don't want to read because this one was... I mean, you can read it. Is it dark? Is it what? It's pretty dark, but... I don't have to read it if you don't it's think it's It's good. just creepy. Like, do, you, do you want me to read it? No, no, no. I read it. It's just long. I'll just kind of... Start, I'll get to the point because this, this girl wrote a very long thing. Just skip it. Go to the short one. Um... Well, the basically, she was. I'll, I'll say a preference, and then I'll jump to where she like gets into the good stuff. She was um, teaching. She was doing the teaching for Te- kids in English in abroad, China, yeah. and they like went to rural areas to like go and for a little bit, like here and there, and it was very normal. Um, they would go and like spend a couple days and shop and like kind of get to know whatever. Um, she said that the, her life at this time was like amazing everything was going great she had she said my um because my teenage had been rather darkly overcast but overwhelming good luck had been coming her way with travel and close friends it was just solid times like there was nothing wrong in that way um she went they went to this specific little like rural place um and she said the second day staying in the small town i woke up feeling a bit odd not bad, just odd. Like my normal thoughts and feelings had been turned down low, like an, a, on a dial. We all decided to go for a walk in the hills right be, behind the town where there was a small summit with a pile of rocks and some prayer flags. To be honest, there was a little alt, there was little altars like these everywhere on every hill. Um, so it just gave us something to do. As we hiked up the hill behind the town, I started feeling stranger and stranger. I wasn't scared and I didn't feel angry or any strong emotion. Um, in fact, it was like emotion was tricking, tricking out of me somehow. And I was getting blanker and blanker, emptier and emptier. My mind started feeling a little bit hazy and more and more. I felt like simply didn't care about anything. A small and rapid dwindling part of myself started to panic, knew that, that something bad was happening. It was like my own inner voice was slowly getting quieter and quieter. I remember we reached this little summit and I simply sank to the ground next to the pile of rocks. Without meaning to, I started tuning out the voices, started tuning out the voices around me and fixed all my attentions on these little pebbles in the dirt. 
I began tapping one against the other repeatedly. Um, do you know the kind of horror that is, um, opposite of feeling scared or feeling anything at all? The kind of, um, hideousness of fly of a fly buzzing against a closed window for hours on end in an empty room. That was what, uh, was filling my mind. It was demonic and, and, in its meaninglessness. I touched my face and felt like I was, uh, like I was grinning at nothing through all the emptiness. And a thought floated into my forefront of my mind. You should just die. At first it sounded totally reasonable and something in me fought it. Like, um, something in me fought it and I was momentarily troubled right then my group started to walk down from the hill and I followed the further we walked, the more normal I felt until we left the town that afternoon. And I was totally freaked out. When another girl, Hannah, mentioned in the odd, an odd offhand way that she felt very strange and depressed while staying there, I told her that I felt the same way. When the group leader mentioned that a local had told him that the town had been plagued with a rash of young women under 25 committing suicide, Hannah and I went white. Dude. Oh, evil spirits, man. How creepy. Like, that is... That feeling of like that coldness coming over you and just like feeling numb dude that's like oh i mean that's scary here's the that thing you're like i think sorry go on that a plague had come on to that town and every that young women under 25 were committing suicide and it's like this girl's age and her friend and they're the only two that felt it are seemly that's nuts so it's like I 100% think stuff like this happens and is real. Of like oh, yeah. these like Oof. evil juju, whatever you want to call it. Like I know some cultures, it's a lot more deep and religious or spiritual about it. Or it's just like, it's a ghost, I don't know, like kind of thing. But I think a lot of people have feelings like this. But they're not enough in touch with their emotions and their feelings to understand of like, like how many people you think would go through that thing? And be like, man, I think I got like food poisoning or something. I feel sick and clammy up here. Like, I don't know. I think you can assess that like someone could be like, oh, maybe it was just the altitude. I mean, it's just a hill. It but here's, like it here's like the a thing. huge, crazy mountain. So then it's like, how do you that's that would be scary. That's nuts. It's scary. I think it's easy to be um, like easy to make excuses for things, and there's also very valid reasons that certain things do happen. But it's like, man, there's a lot of space between the lines for this type of stuff. It's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Got some more juice. Yeah, we got. A little, a little, a little bit. Okay. The what the dog knew. Mm. Dogs, man. Dude, pet stuff is. The worst. In my old apartment, my dog would on occasion look down the hallway towards the bedroom and, from the living room and growl for no apparent reason. Nope. Already well, no. Already no. <laughs> also on occasion when I was asleep in the bedroom, she slept at the foot of the bed, I would wake up to her staring intently at the door and growling. Dude, dogs no. Dogs are so... She was a big girl. 140-pound Great Dane. It's uh, a Cataloo. Cataloo. Uh, where at? And oh, so Cata- Cata- slobber. Catahoula. Oh, Catahoula. So Catahoulas are the really cool dogs. That no, are I know ones, exactly. Like, splotch pattern and have different colored eyes. They have heterochromia. 140 pounds. It's a big dog. So I'm there for a couple of years of the uh, a couple of years of this, thinking, okay, my dog has a good imagination. Wrong. One night I woke up um, due to not. Wait, I woke up due not to my dog growling but barking for all she was worth. And not at the door. She was barking straight at me. Oh. I opened my eyes pretty much immediately, and there was a blur of light leaning over me very closely, certainly less than six inches from my face. It was not distinguishable as a person. It was it resembled a person-sized version of a colorful nebula. You might see a picture of a, se- a science magazine. Three-dimensional and all, I immediately got the dis- a distinct impression that the thing had been watching me asleep for God knows how long. <laughs> And how many times before for all the clarity of that distinct feeling, I had no sense of, of what it wanted, whether it was, um, going, going to hurt her or just curious. I flipped through, I flipped 
right the F out, <laughs> jumped backwards into the other side of the bed, too terrified to scream, and that blur of light receded and disappeared over the course of about 30 seconds. My dog was going absolutely ape. So shortly, therefore, I asked the building manager if anybody had ever died there. She investigated that and came back to me a couple weeks later with, yes, a woman had died of a drug overdose in the apartment in 1995, so 12 years earlier. Shortly after having her child removed from her custody because of her addiction problems. My dog still um, did still growl at the hallway from time to time, but I never saw it again. I moved uh, about a year later. About a year later, I moved the next day. Um, I've had other encounters, but this thing was literally inches from my face, watching me sleep, getting shivers now, just writing about it. Dude. I mean, dogs are so in tune with everything that's going on. You know what I mean? Like, dogs have the ability to read when someone's, like, a jerk. Like, oh, you, yeah. You know they're, that's the truth. Like, well, dogs are they, able, like, you can feel it. They're watch like a dog be, like, stand off and be like, mm, no, I know you're a bad person. I ain't going near you. Kind of thing. And, like, their ability to register phenomena is insane. And that whole thing, like, the Great Dane going nuts and her opening up to, like, a ball of light above her, like, that, I'm just, like, Ugh. Like, literally my first thought when you were reading that was, like, I am so thankful that we've never had anything like that happen in this house. Yeah. Otis Eugene would get him. Yeah, right. He'd be snoozing like he is right now. He'd, like, see, Snoring. like, a, a demon coming into our room and be, like, scratch me. <laughs> and be, like, come on, come over here and scratch me. <laughs> scratch me, demon. Uh, Ooh, I got some good claws to scratch. Oh, stop, please. Um, How much time do we have? We've done 43 minutes. Okay. You want to do one more? I'll do another one. These are just getting creepy. Do you want to do another one? Do you want to add enough creepness? I'll do one more because I already read it, so I know it's in my mind. Okay. There's something on the stairs. So when I was a kid, I would race up to the top of the stairs as fast as I could, like it was some sort of silly game. Well, I must have been five or six at the time. I'm not sure, but I know I was very little. Somewhere along the way, a voice at the top of the stairs started to whisper to me. It would make bets with me, such as, I bet you a penny you can't make it to the top of the stairs. I don't really think that there were a certain amount of time, There think there was a certain amount of time or anything. As I said, I was very little, so I probably didn't have any counting abilities anyways. Ha, I recall just sitting at the top of the stairs, having conversations with this the voice about the betting, of course. Eventually, the voice, it was like a whisper of a man's voice, not my own voice in my head, started, nope. started to bet me my life nope. instead of pennies. I'd nope. say, I bet you your life you can't make it down the, up the stairs, blah, blah. As I got older, it stopped. I never really thought about it at all. I, ever, I never mentioned it to anyone until one night I was sleeping over at my brother's place. I was about 18 and he was 22. And we were talking about spooky stories. Out of nowhere, I brought up the voice at the top of the stairs, and my brother got all quiet and weird. Before I even mentioned the uh, betting aspect, he said, did it make bets with you? <laughs> we both looked at each, other horrifi- at each other horrified. It certainly was freaky after that, that fact. Shudder. <laughs> A lot of bad uh, stuff happened or went down in the family at the period of time my life and my mother a heavenly religious lady said there was a lot of evil in our lives at the time I don't at all think our place was haunted by the way it was a built in the late 70s as I got older I never experienced anything like that again so this one hits different for me you want to know why why this, this isn't even made up my whole entire life from like the age of like five till probably 15, if I had a dream that I'm not making this up. If I had a dream and in the dream I died, like you know how like sometimes you have like a nightmare or whatever and you'd like, you can't like die in your dreams, I thought. But you'd like say like you fell you off knew a you cliff were about to die. or whatever. It's like making me like my heart pound thinking about this. I'm not kidding. Every single time, if something happened in a dream that like I got close to death, like I can remember specific dreams were like one of them i fell off of a bridge over the grand canyon one of them i got run ran over by a rhinoceros like that's, that's, that's how my dreams i i remember having a dream where i was creeping through the air vents of our high school 
or like our school, and there was a T Rex walking through the hallways. Okay, but I like, or, were... but the, those are like the goofy ones. But then like, there's like actual like legit dark ones. Every single dream, if I was going to die in it, the dream would almost snap, and I would be watching myself fall down a staircase. Like I would be at the bottom of a staircase, and I would see myself falling down a staircase over and over until I woke up. Every we're, single one. We're gonna have to look into that. I'm not kidding. Like, it, in the staircase was a specific one, the one at my grandma's house that you've been to. You know where we helped carry the boat, the yeah. uh, little boat table down that staircase. I would be at the bottom of it, and I would watch myself fall down from the top of it. And when I would hit the bottom of it, I would wake up every single time. Okay, that's creepy. Or that's just something subconsciously. And it happened. I mean, I believe this is all real. Like, that's yeah, that's crazy. And like, it happened from, like, as early as I can remember having nightmares and stopped sometime when I was in high school. Yeah, we'll got to look into that. Foreshadowing. No. YouTuber Lost in Lindsay Stop. falls down I rebuke that. Good thing um, we live in, in the name of house. Jesus. <laughs> I rebuke that. But for real, um, that's, that's like. This one, I, uh, I'm not going to lie. I skimmed most of it and did not see the part of Benny on their life. So that was uh, that one just that one just gave me the literal shivers because that's crazy. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's good enough for the Halloween episode. <laughs> that's enough evil for one night. I should have done these first and then done the lighter. Those are lighter. Those They're are not just, like, light. Those are just short ones. These are like demonic. Technically, these are lighter because no one died in these ones. The other ones, everyone died in them. That's true. These are just a lot, a lot more creepier. The other ones are human violence. This is supernatural, this paranormal. This is true. Mm. Man, I live for this stuff. Yeah, we got a lot more. It's like, <laughs> no, maybe for another time. Maybe we do a double oh. spooktober. A haunted strip If people up. like it, now you have my interest. That's a long oh story. Oh, my Lord. That has to be good. That has to be its own thing. Well, maybe we'll do another one if people enjoy this. Yeah, if you enjoy this, you want to hear some creepy... Dude, I'm shivering. And this has nothing to do with, like... I don't know. I, I've said this before. I said this on the Skidwalker ones, even though people thought I was just hating on it. I'm not hating on it. I think that there are things that are beyond us that are, are like, it's real. And you don't want to dabble into it. I feel like we're dabbling a little bit right now. So... Um, that is why I'm like, mm, on the, uh, a little accent on this one now, but well, I'm a bit of a dabbler, I'm a little dabbler. but no, I, I do believe that there is like, um, you know, that there's evil there's spirits behind that this. literally yeah. are trying to, you know, do dark things work, like that. Work for like, Satan, bro. Yeah. You know? And, and it's, I just feel like that stuff is wild. It's crazy where it comes out and like, why or why those people? I don't know, um, but I do believe it's like, that. Why it's is like that a real energy thing. released in that way? Kind of thing. I just don't even want to even put yourself in that arena. Yeah, like I don't even. I don't. I. This is as much as I'll like, as much as I can even dabble into it because it's just such a dark web, dark thing that you don't want to enter into your life or your thoughts. One, but one thing that fun for a Halloween episode, right? Yes, for real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't even get into it. I found some good stuff. I looked great, through man. a lot of crap, a lot of like, oh, uh, like not that I think that things aren't genuine, even just how it's written. It's sometimes some like, really well written accounts. This one was like the mo the best accounts I found. Those that are I was good, like, man. that's creepy. Those are really good. I appreciate it. Yeah. Up, up top, slap me five ones. I'll shake you on that. Yeah, mm. oh, big handshakes, firm handshakes all around. Well. We appreciate you guys greatly. Thanks for joining us here on the Dogcast and Stay listening safe, to some guys. spooky dooky stories. Chelsea, thank you for enthralling us with these um, horrifying things. You're welcome. Hey, if you guys enjoy the spookiness, uh, leave some suggestions on what some other things that we should dive into and delve into because I really enjoyed this. The Skinwalker one was super fun. I love doing this. I think it's really fun to just read like creepy stories. So if you have some suggestions... Leave them down in the comments on YouTube. Uh, we appreciate you guys greatly. Until the next one, peace. Bye.